Hello, Illuminated Souls. I'm Brianne Drioni. And I'm Tina Damore. Welcome to Shamans After Dark. Today, we'll be discussing energetic intrusions, what they are, how do we incur them. We'll also be talking about the ways we can avoid having them collect in our energy body. So energetic intrusions, this is like a really big uh, huge big, topic. It is a huge topic. It's a lot of information. If we were teaching this, I'd probably do it in a two or three day. Yes. Two workshop. or three at least. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, especially for teaching someone how to remove, how to remove them. them. <laughs> this is the different thing altogether. So this is a brief, yes. a brief it's a overview. overview. <laughs> it's, for, it's food for thought people. Um, you know, how we actually create intrusions for ourselves and others and how we also incur them from others. So, um, and I, I get asked, I don't know about you, but I get asked this a lot by clients. How do I keep clear? How do I keep my yeah, energy yeah. body clear? And it's not something I can teach them in uh, an hour. So, well, and also just living life in a body is just something that, you know, I don't think anyone, I still get intrusions. I'm yeah. sure you experience intrusions. Oh, yeah. It's just, it just happens. I, you know, it's just living out in a life in a body. I think there's, you know, fortunately we know how we can clear them, clear them. Yeah. And also probably have, and sometimes we don't, I know sometimes I've been like, Oh, my energy feels so heavy. And I'm not sure why I'm feeling like this. And then you'll, you know, you or will journey for me and we'll kind of be like, Oh, and I'm like, Oh, well, that makes sense. And I oh, feel so much better. I mean, again, <laughs> uh, going back to the last episode, we just talked about, we have our own blinders on. And sometimes um, I had a healer a long time ago, said, you know, sometimes you don't know you have a kick me sign on your back. Yeah. <laughs> so you need somebody else to help you out. <laughs> yes. that's, you know, we're not in this alone. Um, and so when you've got your good peeps to support you and help you out, then you know, you're good to go. Yeah. And it's, I think it's important for anyone who does energy healing or any kind of healing work that you have a friend or a colleague that you guys either trade or can work with to help to work for each other when you feel like maybe something's a little off or just check in and just so you're you know, right. the energetic health, right? The kind right. Of- when I stepped into energy work, it was Reiki that kind of, you know, woke me up a bit. And, um, you know, when people are healers, they're, they're pretty darn sensitive to begin with. And so it's super, super easy to pick up something that isn't yours. And so I hear a lot of times, even recently, in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, I do Reiki and then I figured, you know, I started to do a healing on this person. I just felt so drained after I'm like, mm-hmm. because, you know, in the way that I was trained um, a few, you know, it's probably about 17 years ago now or more than that. Um, we didn't really talk about how to really clear in a way that worked. Um, but you can pick up, pick up uh, external intrusions. And so we, the shamanic word for this is intrusions. And it's just basically energy that isn't yours. It gets stuck. It gets stuck in your energy body. So the external stuff can get uh, picked up through road rage. I'm sure we've all experienced that. Somebody just flipping you off for no reason or, you know. <laughs> the angry person in Walmart who's just raging inside yes. and that energy is just kind of going everywhere. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was once walking in a Walmart. I don't go there very often. Uh, I need to say that first, but I was walking in a Walmart and this woman just slammed her cart into the back of my legs oh. and said, hurry up. And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't, I, I just bit my tongue. Um, but yeah, I mean, angry people in stores, it's like a smog of toxicity. Um, and then there's people in your life that might be a little toxic. And so uh, you can pick up intrusions. Yeah. And, and just also thinking of uh, like, think of the global collective energy, right? Of, like all that we've been going through right now, pandemic, right? Conflict in the Ukraine, turbulent politics, just think turbulent about all financial stuff is yes, turbulent like, as well. Everything exactly. is unknown. And so people are dealing with so much stuff and that just collects, you know, contributes to the overall collective energy and you could be right. out we're all affected by that. You're out walking, right. or living in it. You're in your community. It's just, it's just stuff that we can pick up. Right. And that's, that's one way we um, incur intrusions. The other way is internal intrusions. And so that's more of like repressed emotions, um, grief, anger, frustration, desperation, shame, guilt, 
um, fear and anxiety. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not angry, but, <laughs> and I think that happens a lot with people in, in more spiritual communities. Like it's wrong to be angry. Uh, it's not really wrong. Those are actually red flags for your own personal boundaries. If something's ticking you off, it's not, it means it's not okay for your comfort level and yeah. you're feeling violated. So the anger is coming up, not as a way for you to react. Um, but sometimes we do, um, and we're human, but more of respond and go, huh, I'm feeling this way right now. What is that telling me about yeah. this situation? When we stuff them down, we actually create um, blocks in our own system. And those are internal intrusions. And I just also want to add for women, especially when we're, you know, we're told in so many different ways, it's not okay for us to be angry. If we're angry, you know, we get labeled as something that's like our, our anger is wrong and right. men, it's okay for men to be angry. Men are supposed right. to be angry. They express their anger. It's a normal thing. And when women don't, you know, conform or we don't, you know, we compromise our boundaries all the time being polite. Like maybe we don't really want to do something, but we feel like we have to be, to be polite. It's just like when we tell our kids go, you know, let this person hug you because it's polite when the kids feel like, I don't want, I don't want that, that person not comfortable. in my space. Right. And we we're like, we're kind of, you know, from the era I grew up in, we're conditioned to like be caretakers. Well, and also to not have these boundaries for ourselves. We're taught it's wrong to hold a boundary or not, you know, having people over or entertaining and maybe you don't want to because you right. have to be this good hostess, but you right. know, maybe you're not in the space to do that. It's just that it's interesting and that can really build up too and cause those internal intrusions of like, right. because we feel like so much of that isn't get, doesn't get to be expressed. And, and conversely, you know, it's okay for men to be angry, but they can't show grief. Right. Or they can't cry. They can't be, you know, vulnerable. They're not a man if they're, if they're doing that. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, I think one of the sicknesses of our, of our modern culture, if, if you read, um, one of my favorite books is of a water and spirit by Maladoma Somme. And he talks about the, the grieving process in his culture and how, uh, when someone passes away, the, the women and the men are just enraptured by their grief. They're crying for days mm. and they're getting it literally out of their system. And that process they believe is also part of uh, releasing that soul into ancest to ancestralize. And so it, it, it's such a different thing. And, and he even remarks coming to this culture in, in the Western world, it's like we're all bottled up. We have repressed all of our, you know, and in the Celt, the Celts do keening, you know. Keen, they, I was they, just going to say that. Yeah. I was just sitting here thinking, I'm like keening, you know. It's just a, <laughs> we did. We're on the wavelength right there. Because <laughs> I think that would be actually an interesting, um, interesting to just gather with women in keen at some point, right? right? To, to allow ourselves to grieve. Yes. Um, in a sacred space. Yeah. In a, spa a, a safe container. Because I think, um, and I've been invited to that. Um, to that kind of a space, but I think it needs to be led by people that are holding that space in a, in a way of a comfort. So it feels safe for everybody. Right. Cause how vulnerable, I mean, and also right? you feel like uh, people are going to be watching or listening. And instead of allowing ourselves to, to release this grief that mm -hmm. for so many things that we carry, um, yeah. you know, I think it could be really healing and also then to guiding that energy to releasing to the universe instead of out into the collective. Right. To, to be trans transformed and, and um, not, not bogged down in the collective. But yeah, I think, you know, we do bottle up our, our emotions in this culture. And, um, and when, when someone is uh, expressing their emotions and not sending, I mean, that's healthy, but they're also seen as odd and strange uh, because you're supposed to have the stiff upper lip and that just isn't healthy. And in my opinion, and also in my helping spirits point of view, it's not, um, but you know, we do have human moments free. We, we do have, you know, we get flipped off on the road and someone cuts <laughs> you off and yes. you're like, Hey, you caused an accident or you're in a rush and yeah. you're like stuck behind right? someone who's going really slow and you're like, can you please drop ah, the speed yeah. limit? Please. <laughs> um, and I think we have to, the, the, the key is to be careful that we aren't sending energetic darts like that i don't have the yeah. specific angry thought that i am sending to this poor driver in front of me who's probably trying to be really safe and good and and maybe I, is having anxiety on the road right. or something and you know you never fast. know or they're you know an older lady or gentleman who's just they're being taking their time taking their time yeah. and they're not in a rush and <laughs> and i always try to tell myself that spirits reminding me to slow down 
<laughs> yeah, yes. even if it's hard, yes. I'm going to get there. It's going to be okay. Um, but, <laughs> but it's just important. I think that's the difference of like, if you're, you know, we all have human moments, we're here in a body, we're yeah. human and means we have our shadow bits and our light bits. And that all comes together to make us a whole and neither one is wholly good or wholly bad. You know, it's just part of how we, sh- it is who we are. Exactly. How we show up. And, and part of that is understanding when we're angry and upset and triggered and, trying to have the forethought in those moments to not send those angry, like being really frustrated with someone, right? Or a coworker or somebody you don't get along with. And you're just, it's all bottled up, but you're still sending these, like that inner critic is like, I can't believe she said that. I can't, you know, <laughs> but you know, and those inner, those are darts, right? Those are little yeah. arrows. It's like, Oh, she looks terrible in that dress. And she thinks she looks fabulous. You know, <laughs> that's the, the, the stuff because it that is the energy. It is. It's the energy that fuels those thoughts that, and then you're directing it in a specific Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, in some indigenous uh, settings, I mean, the shamans, that's their, that's what they do. They send darts to each other. They're in an energetic warfare all the time. But, you know, in this culture, I mean, we have so much already bogging us down. Why would we want to add to that? Um, and if the more and more you study shamanism, the more you realize how everything really is energy and that people send each other gunk all the time yeah. and we don't even know we're doing it. Or it mean to. You know, like we're not even intentionally, we're just caught in this moment. Right. And some people don't mean to, and some people actually do intend to send bad energy to other people, which really kind of saddens me. Um, But it does happen. It's human. It is human. It's our human nature, unfortunately. But, you know, our emotions are opportunities to really self-reflect and self-care. It's like emotions are about, oh, there's a need here. I have a need that's not being met. And what is that need? And, and then after that practice of doing that for a while, quite a while, um, there, there's another person that has a need too. And, and they could be on different wavelengths and having strategies that aren't healthy about getting those needs met. But that's really what it's all about. Yeah. And I, you know, I've been on this real journey lately about trying to be in a space of like when things come up for me, I'm trying to understand what it is. Look at myself in a space of curiosity of like, it's not this person doing something to me that's upsetting me. It's just this something in this scenario has triggered something in me. Right. And trying to be curious about that so I can understand myself better. I think sometimes and we're always like, oh, this person's upsetting to me and that person did this to Mm -hmm. me. And, you know, like I want to look at my internal landscape a little bit. No, because yeah, people do stuff to us all the time, but I can't control everybody else. Right. I can't control how people respond to me and right my own people pleaseriness, you know, like I'm learning that it's not my job to make everybody happy. I, it's my job to live a good life that makes me happy. That's enriching and to be of service because that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, that's that home for me, it's that bit of growth of like trying to look at it and come from a place of curiosity. Yeah, exactly. Like what is, what is it in me that's not working in this scenario? And so, right. And and what is this, what is this, button being pushed in me that this person and yes it's a lesson but i want to be careful too because you know we can get ourselves into some situations where we're like oh this is all coming up for me it's all me and i want to be really careful about that because some people are are really uh, operating at a toxic level and so sometimes it's not really you at all it's it's something that you need to step away from yeah and just to feed back to that though but i think when we have an opportunity to look in and say oh this person's crossing boundaries for me. Yes. Right. In a way that makes me unhappy. So this relationship and the way we engage isn't working right for me. And I need to either have better boundaries with this person or I need to maybe not engage with this person anymore. Right. Or this situation, because I'm working on my own boundaries. And I think when we can understand when we actually have a boundary being crossed in some way, we can better hold our boundaries and understand what does and doesn't work for us. Right. In the right. way we engage in things. Absolutely. Um, and so really, um, you know, our emotions are a way to kind of red flag. Something's coming up for us. Okay, so how can I sit with this? And how can I self care with compassion around this? That feels right for me and self love. Yeah. And sometimes that means stepping away from a situation. Um, and, and just learning what you do deserve and what you don't deserve. Um, but the self-compassion really sort of dissolves or softens the intensity of emotions so that we can better understand ourselves. And um, we're able then to really fill ourselves up with something that's going to serve us rather than continuing with directing emotion at someone else. Um, 
And we also can, if we find ourselves in that human moment of sending um, a kind of emotion to somebody or, you know, like you were saying, I can't believe her. And uh, <laughs> we can also, if we catch ourselves, which is, you know, it takes a bit of work, but we can also wrap that thought that we sent out with in a bubble of light. So it will do no harm. And that will kind of transform it because we really don't want to send more gunk. We have enough, as I said before, in the collective of it's just heavy gunk yeah. in this ordinary reality. And also what we call in shamanism, the middle world, it can be a little bit more chaotic than the transcendental realms. So, you know, I think too another, another, not just, I mean, cause if you can catch that thought and put it in light and release it and trans, you know, ask that it kind of just be transmuted, changed from that heaviness. But yeah. also like, if you know, you've sent it kind of imagining a little fishing line going back and yeah. catching it right after the fact, because you're like, okay, I'm home now and I'm no longer angry. Poor person in the car. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just bring that back and <laughs> put it yeah. in its bubble of light and send it away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but that's a yeah. real practice. I mean, that's hard. It is. It takes a lot of intention to try and change the way we've habitually shown up for so long. Right. Because it's normalized in our culture. Mm-hmm. It is. And, um, you know, we can only change what we're aware of. So Tina, let's talk a little bit about how can we protect ourselves from having these energy, you know, these little energy pieces that aren't ours kind of collecting in our energy body. And what might be some symptoms that someone might feel if they're having, you know, if they're carrying some energy, like how does that manifest and cause disease in people when we, we have that and we don't, we let it go kind of untreated or we don't address it? Yeah, I love how you said cause dis-ease because it does cause dis-ease. Um, you know, it, it can manifest in many ways. I mean, it can it can be um, experienced as an anxiety that sort of lands in a particular, you know, maybe in your chest area. It can be um, uh, felt as a heaviness or a depression sort of thing. I don't really like to generalize the word depression because it looks very differently for different people. Um, it can manifest as localized pain, and that can actually over time manifest as chronic illness. I'm not saying that all chronic illness is caused by intrusions, but it's a part of that. So, um, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, um, maybe I should use a blue egg or wrap myself in a bubble. Yeah, that's a good tool. I mean, I do that too. I kind of have this thing with my helping spirits and I you, you must have some tools as well, Brie, that before I go into even the grocery store, I kind of shield up. Um, And I mentally talk, telepathically talk to my helping spirits and say, okay, I'm walking into a store. I don't need these intrusions. So please help me stay as clear as possible. Does it always work? No, it doesn't always work. Well, it takes energy to maintain, right? Like so the blue bubble like takes energy to maintain. It's not something and you can maintain it longer the more you practice doing that. Right. Um, I also think there's like sometimes my daily practice for myself, I should say, is that I ask that spirit put an impermeable uh, impermeable barrier (laughs) protection around (laughs) myself so that I don't take on anything that doesn't belong to me in my day. And that is what I do every day. And I have practices for myself after a healing session with a client to just make mm-hmm. sure I'm not retaining anything that doesn't belong to me. Right. Um, I think there are, there are certainly many different ways people might find to clear their energy body. But again, you can always go see a qualified shamanic practitioner and they might, you know, in their work with you, diagnose that, hey, there's something going on here. And one thing I did want to add too, I've sometimes noticed that energetic intrusions can also show up a little bit as feelings that aren't really yours sometimes like you're like i'm overreacting to this and i normally wouldn't react in this way Mm -hmm. and i'm not really sure you know they can kind of just enhance these little bits yeah they amplify the emotion yeah you might normally have this like oh a little bit of like a mm, blip on your radar but if it's an intrusion sort of amplifies it seems like a weird overreaction you're like what is going on with me i feel kind of out of balance yeah that's the thing i wanted to mention you know it takes it takes a focused mind to continually shield yourself and so if you get in a conversation and get kind of relaxed um, you might not even think about that shield and yeah, it's up, but you have to constantly kind of re ramp it up. And so, you know, we all have our weak moments and I say weak in more vulnerable ways, not in a bad way. And so that's when you can, um, in fear, a trained shamanic practitioner, you, you might have already learned to do extraction work. Um, and you can do that on yourself. And again, you might have a blind spot. And so it's always helpful to ask a colleague or, uh, another trained shamanic practitioner for, um, an extraction work. So the, the cure for that quote unquote cure for intrusions is extraction work. And that's when, you know, you work with a helping spirit that has volunteered itself to do this particular job, so to speak. 
and they kind of clear you and they bring that energy to another dimension and neutralize it and transform it so it can come back in the way it was before. But it takes, as we said, two or three days of good, solid training and um, not something you can really learn online. I don't feel ethically that that's a good thing to do. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of the stuff is best learned in a one on one kind of setting where you can really dig in and ask questions and and have it demonstrated and you get a chance to practice that on someone and right. you know all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it can be done long distance. I mean, shamanic healing works outside of space and time, but it's it's just really good to be in person to to learn the the traditional ways that uh, shamans around the world have removed intrusions and traditionally they were sucked out. Um, which I don't recommend nowadays, but yeah. <laughs> it's evolved. The practice has evolved a little bit, I think. Yes, because you know we don't spend we don't spend days upon days and in, in, in merged with our helping spirits and dance. Uh, we don't live our lives like that, so we're a little bit more vulnerable, and that's in that way. Um, but you know, your your helping spirits will find ways to make it work in this modern culture, so that you can remove intrusions and a safe keep you safe at the same time. You know, and, and a great resource that we'll have listed on our resource page on our website is Sandra Ingerman's book, How to Heal Toxic Thoughts. It's not a yeah. long book, but it has it talks a lot about this um, and energetic intrusions and kind of how how our thoughts get kind of sent out like these little energy darts as mm-hmm. we've discussed and, and kind of get stuck in places they aren't meant to be. Stuff. Right. So, uh, but it's a great read if you're looking to kind of deep dive into this work a little more and understand it a little better. And it also mm-hmm. just gives you some great examples on how you can show up and kind of not do that, not contribute yeah. to the overall, you know, sending of energy. Right. Being proactive about this, this actually is a pollution type of a problem. I mean, even Senator Ingerman has said things like, you know, our, our pollution is really not uh, material pollution. It's, it's energetic pollution. It's a really good book. So Tina, what does spirit have to say about the ways we can avoid collecting intrusions in our energy body, both internal and external? So my helping spirits had a lot to say about this, and I know yours did too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so they said, hello, although it takes uh, practice in recognizing when one feels off, it takes more conscious awareness to recognize when one feels centered and grounded, which is a huge thing mm. to realize if you start feeling off and you're like, hmm. Use the feeling of centeredness as a gauge to know when spiritual hygiene needs to be practiced. Humans have their own blinders on, so although one can perform extraction work on the self if one is trained, it is advised to seek out a healer to have a second pair of eyes to make sure one is clear. Pay attention to the inner knowing, intuition, and felt sense to recognize when you might feel heavy or bogged down or just off. Intuit where you have been since this feeling began. Ask yourself, who you have interacted with to gauge who or what may be approached with greater discernment in the future to avoid further intrusions. So if the offender is a stranger and it has been one occurrence, carve out time for guided meditations to clean oneself or get a a well-trained shamanic practitioner for extraction work. But if this is a pattern from a certain place or certain people, you might evaluate whether these places or people are contributing to your spiritual health or not. Choose carefully who or what is deserving to enter into your arena. What did your helping spirits have to say? I think you worked with particular helping spirits. I did. I did. And she had a lot to say. She said, boundaries, girl, healthy, (laughs) energetic, spiritual, and physical boundaries. (laughs) (laughs) I love how spirit has a sense of humor. (laughs) She has. Uh, So uh, she said, when one is lacking boundaries and allows oneself to be compromised by others, one can become vulnerable to their energetic dissonance. Hmm. Healers also tend to take on the energy of others from a desire to heal or help without realizing it. It's important to have good energy grounding and clearing practices for oneself that are done on a regular basis to keep one's energy clear from the dissonant frequencies of others. Another's energetic tune isn't ours to hold and can be a source of dis-ease. Taking time to tune into yourself and how you feel energetically and physically can help you to sense that perhaps what you're feeling isn't stemming from you. Feeling heavy and lethargic physically or off balance emotionally or reacting in ways that aren't usual for you may be indicators that you may have some stuck energy. If one doesn't know how to clear their energy body, working with a trusted practitioner of some kind who knows how to clear and remove stuck energy can be immensely helpful. Even a doctor sees a doctor when they need to and getting an outside perspective can help us to address issues we may be unable to see. Lovely. 
Thank you so much, Bree. Uh, this episode's journey prompt, which can be found on our website, shamansafterdark.com, is please show me from what places or people I am incurring intrusions so I can limit this occurrence as much as possible. We hope you'll join us next week as we talk about the phenomenon of soul loss and what the traditional shamanic cure is for this epidemic in our culture. Until next time, everyone, keep on shining your light. <laughs>